What's up, everybody? What I want to do today is talk about would I still use PHP in 2024? And if you're looking to learn how to code or program, would I recommend that you learn PHP in 2024? Well, let's talk about it. All right, so we know there's thousands of programming languages out there, right? We know that only a handful of them get the vast majority of the attention when it comes to what people want to use. It's actually more than a handful, but in essence, a very small fraction of the amount of programming languages out there get the vast majority of the attention. But what I always recommend is that if you're going to be looking at a programming language, should you go based on what's popular in terms of the common vernacular, in terms of the conversation, or should you take a deeper look into the programming language, see what the support for that language is, see how in demand the language is, take a look at the market share it has in terms of being utilized in various different projects and see if the language is a mature language. Has it been around long enough to be battle tested? And does it seem like it'll be around for years to come? Those are just some of the things you have to consider. Of course, some other things you have to consider when choosing a programming language, will it help you achieve the goal you're looking to achieve? Is it the right language for the project you're working on? All right, so when we're talking about PHP, based on the type of work that I do, would I continue using PHP in 2024? And the answer is yes, and this is why. So don't stop the video just yet because it's very important you understand the context. I am a web developer. I'm a WordPress developer. I develop websites. And because I develop websites, it's a very particular stack that I work with. Obviously, Linux is the operating system most widely used. I do use an Apache server. I do use MySQL for the database. And in essence, PHP is considered part of that stack. It's called the LAMP stack. There's other stacks. You can use the LAMP stack as well. But my familiarity is with the LAMP stack. And the reason is, is because since I do web development, since I build websites, the technologies that I'm working with are those that are best suited for the web. So obviously HTML is a part of that. CSS is a part of that. JavaScript is a major part of websites, obviously. But since a lot of my work is with WordPress, PHP is a no brainer in that sense. Now let's look deeper into some of the facts. If I'm looking to build a game, if I'm looking to build the next Minecraft, or if I'm looking to build the next Call of Duty or whatever, PHP is not gonna be the language for that. But if I'm looking to build a website for the back end, PHP dominates in terms of the scripting language or the programming language used for dynamic websites. PHP still has about 70 plus or maybe even closer to 80% of market share when it comes to dynamic languages being used as the server side language, as the dynamic scripting language. So that is a significant market share. And why does that matter? Well, it matters because one, there's a lot of websites already in existence that use PHP. That means the demand for the amount of people who need work for their websites will continue to be there. And considering the fact that WordPress itself powers such a large majority of the web and PHP is still one of the main languages used by WordPress, millions of websites are coming online every single day. And that means PHP developers are still gonna be highly in demand. All right, so you also have to think about the maturity of the language, right? I mentioned that that already. But it's good to know that PHP has been around for a very long time and there's a very active developer community behind PHP itself. Over the years it's had its issues. It hasn't always been the fastest language. It's sometimes had issues in terms of performance and security and optimization and you know key areas. But every language has that. Every large language will have issues. And the reason is because they're written by humans, right? And even if AI writes it, AI is trained on human code and therefore, at least for the short term, will have issues within the code that it generates. So every language is going to have its own set of history and own issues. But PHP has evolved significantly. We're already on PHP 8.3. And the performance of PHP now in comparison to how it used to be is significant. It's extremely fast. I mean, if you compare it to something like Python, Python is a great general purpose programming language. It can be used for more than just one use case. And I think that's what makes it such an attractive language. But PHP is really made for one thing. You could use it for web development, for websites. I use it for more than that. I use it on the CLI as well. But in general, it's made to power websites. So because it's so singularly focused, it's not trying to be everything. It's not trying to be the programming language that you know checks off every single box of what a programmer or developer is looking for in terms of multiple types of projects. 
It's literally just made for websites or web development. So the developer team behind PHP itself has been able to make it their priority to really focus on increasing the performance of it, making sure it's optimized, and making sure that it provides the level of functionality that's needed to power websites. And let's face it, yeah, we live in a world where we have websites, we have web apps, we have apps on iOS, we have apps on Android, we have programs on desktops and laptops. We have so many different types of pieces of software out there. But one constant is people still visit websites. People still use websites. Businesses still need websites. So that's why to me, it's a no brainer to use PHP in 2024, to learn PHP in 2024. How long do I think PHP will be in use for? What do I think the lifespan for PHP is gonna be? I think it's gonna be around for a very long time. I mean, we still see, I mean, I did a video not that long ago, a few videos ago, where I spoke about COBOL and how it's being used by government websites, how it's being used in our financial markets. And there is a movement to try to migrate to a more modern language in terms of COBOL. But even that, that's gonna take a long time to do. It's not gonna be something that happens overnight. And at the same time, COBOL itself has evolved. So as for PHP, I think it's gonna be around for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, who knows how long. I mean, as long as websites are still a thing, I think PHP is still gonna be the dominant scripting language used to power websites. Now, in terms of ease of use and usability and feature set and functionality and, uh, and the ability to learn the language and to use the language, that's another factor. I mean, there's a reason why PHP dominates so much and it's because it is really an easy language to learn. It's not that difficult. I mean, putting together a fully fledged program, that's different, right? That's about project planning. That's about identifying how to piece together various languages in order to make a final product, a production ready product. But the language, it's a very easy language to learn. And there's so much information out there on the web. I mean, right here on YouTube, there's a significant amount of videos and tutorials that people put out all the time. I have a series of videos here on my channel, all dedicated to PHP, and I have to update that. I mean, most of the stuff is still the same, but I think it's good to put a fresh perspective on some of these tutorials to make them more up to date. But even besides mine, I mean, if you go to other channels, like I believe Travis Media's just released a new tutorial. I'm not sure if it's here, or if it's on Udemy. I know he does stuff on two different platforms, but there's a bunch of tutorials for PHP. And then when you start talking about tutorials found on websites, forget about it. There's, there's millions of websites that have tutorials on how to use PHP for web development. And then one thing you always have to look at is the documentation pages. PHP has a really good set of documentation pages and it's always being updated uh, with new information. There's a million comments on there from people who are professional PHP developers. There's a whole bunch of code examples you could use in order to practice with and to learn from. And I think that's why there's so many PHP developers out there. The fact that the amount of tutorials, the amount of information, it's so easily found online that anybody who dedicates us, you know, a short amount of time can get to understand the language very quickly. And I mean understand it, to understand the basics of it, the fundamental. And then from there, it's about the art of learning to program. Now, what about the security of PHP? Is it a secure language? You know, you hear that all the time. And the reason why you hear that all the time is because since it's such an easy language to learn, you have a lot of experimental code out there. You have a lot of people experimenting and putting their code online. And sometimes that code is good. And often, unfortunately, it's not the best code and that happens and that's why it's very important to make sure the sources you're using in order to learn are good reputable sources and your ability to debug code and to determine whether or not it is secure performance that's a skill set that we all have to learn and even some of the most advanced programmers they're still in a state of learning when it comes to how to improve code because Nobody writes perfect code. Nobody has on day one code that never needs to be changed. That's why there's always a million updates, whether it's on your computer, if it's on your phone, on your tablet, whatever. There's always a million updates happening because no matter how skilled the programmer is, there's always gonna be an issue somewhere. And it could be based on performance, it could be based on security, it could be based on updates within the language itself. But in essence, PHP is a secure language if you use best security practices. Make sure you sanitize and validate your input and output. Make sure you use prepared statements where possible. You know, just follow the best practices when it comes to writing code and you will be okay. And I'm a big believer that erring on the side of caution is a good thing. 
So when I'm thinking about code, I think about it from a security standpoint, from a performance standpoint. And sometimes they conflict, right? You know, if you want to have the fastest possible code, that means you might have to use less functions or less built-in methods in order to secure that code. That could open you up to security issues. So that means sometimes there's a trade-off in terms of security and performance. And you have to know how to balance that. Now, I just personally believe that you have to do everything you can to secure your website, secure your application, secure your code. So if performance is impacted, you know, that's something you have to contend with. And try to find other methods to increase the performance in other areas. But again, PHP is secure. And then if you start looking at the job market out there, if you go to any of the online websites that post jobs, you're going to see there's a million jobs available for PHP developers. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Again, a lot of these big agencies, a lot of these big companies, their websites are powered by PHP. And that's not going to change anytime soon. So in 2024, I'm still going to be using PHP. Are there other languages that I'm going to explore? Of course. I mean, I like taking a look at new languages. I'm thinking about taking a look at COBOL, seeing if that's maybe an option, especially since there's an opportunity there in terms of the demand and the limited supply of developers. And it'll probably take me some time to learn it, and I got to see if that's going to be a worthwhile investment. But then other languages I'm looking at is Rust. Rust is another language I'm looking at. And the reason why I'm looking at Rust is because it's a language that is going to be in extremely high demand moving forward, especially since it's memory safe. And I can see there's going to be a high demand converting older code to Rust. But again, that's a different type of programming language. That's not for web development. It's a different type of language and is used more for system type tools and system type projects. And I like building tools and I like building things that are a little bit more native or closer to the operating system itself, closer to the hardware that could be a little bit more performance. And I think that, you know, learning a language that's outside your comfort zone and outside of what you typically use can be beneficial, especially since it'll force you to expand the way you think in terms of programming. That's why I made it a point to learn different languages. I learned JavaScript, I learned Python, learned PHP, and of course, every language that goes with the web. Now, that's me personally. I like learning. I like trying out new languages, new things. I like experimenting. I don't always push everything to production level. A lot of the stuff is for my own self-development. But ultimately, I think it makes you a better programmer if you get to look at different ways of coding, a different way of programming something. So if you're looking to learn a new programming language in 2024, then I definitely recommend PHP because it is in high demand. It is a language that's going to be around for a very long time. It's a language that companies pay developers well who know the language. Is it the most highest paid? No. But developers who are really good at it get paid really well. It dominates the entire landscape when it comes to web development. It's an easy language to learn, and there's a significant amount of community support around it. So those are my two cents. I think that learning PHP is a good idea. Are there other options? Yeah, of course. There's always options out there. You could use JavaScript for pretty much everything nowadays, right? You could use it on the front end and you could use it on the back end. So a lot of people are considering that. You could use Node.js, you could use React, you could use vanilla JavaScript, you could use a bunch of other libraries and frameworks, and that's an option. But ultimately, that market share dominates, and that's a major consideration when determining if you should learn a particular programming language. All right, so that's it. That's enough listening to me. Now it's time for you to get out there and start coding. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.